let me let me tell you guys about my fucking my weekend. Uh, I went to a housewarming thing, which, by the way, on in typical Arab fashion, was two days. So, <laughs> so I we I slept over at the place. Um, and uh, this particular person uh, is married, and their partner has a fucking pet parrot. Or I don't know, it's a parakeet, par- a fucking bird. A loud bird, a bird. Yeah. They have a colorful <laughs> bird. Yeah, I don't know what to describe it. Other, it's a colorful bird, right? And this fucking thing, it does nothing but screech. I don't know what to tell you. I don't think it's fucking cute. It shits everywhere, by the way. It flies around and it shits in. The- <laughs> Not only this, but it has like, of course, it's a bird. It's supposed to be, you know, they have a different uh, internal clock, right? So this thing will start screeching at fucking 5 a.m., 4 a.m., as loud as it can. And it's ear-piercing, especially inside of an enclosed space, right? Um, and I, I very, very strongly considered actually... <laughs> it's so bad to say. I was going to fucking kill that thing. I was going to put it in the freezer or some shit. I don't know what to tell you. That thing was... Like, I get such little sleep as it is. Fuck. And now I'm, I'm forced to go to some stupid housewarming thing that I don't want to go to. And there's a stupid bird. Fuck. But yeah, no, no. The, the place was nice. Um... Uh, I had a good time. There were lots of family and friends and people I didn't know. Uh, so I had to do the fucking, no, oh, shake your hand. And hey, like, what do you do? Blah, all that bullshit. Uh-huh. Um, and then there were a bunch of kids and then they were vaping. And then my mom was like, oh, what's this? And, oh, no. <laughs> and they're like, oh, it's a vape. And my mom was like, what's a vape? And for the, un- the people in the, in the audience, my mother ha- was used to be a smoker. And she used to smoke like a pack a day for 20 years uh, until she basically got cancer. And then she was like, you know what? I think I'll be give up smoking. And she hasn't smoked since. Um, and then she sees this fucking vape shit. And she takes one one hit of it. And she's like, these fucking kids, they're off to something. <laughs> and then she comes up to me and she's like, can I do the vape? Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm like, no, you can't do the fucking vape. What are you talking about? The science is still oh, out on the I vape. St- Come on. I We're not sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's it's not not the cancer shit, but the nicotine. All right, I'm just that. Yeah, okay. no, no, it, it is like what she did is a nightmare because like she probably hasn't smoked for years on on end, and now these <laughs> kids show up with like a stick, and it's like the perfect excuse. Oh my god, it's a stick. It's not it's not an actual <laughs> cigarette. It's a fucking and, like, USB. And like years upon years <laughs> of smoke. not smoking just went out the fucking window. It, it, that is so <laughs> depressing. Like what the fuck did she do? Uh, no, she she has enough self control, but she keeps a pack. She always keeps a pack in her bag and a pack at home. Huh. And I'm like, why do you have a pack? She's like, oh, no, it's just because I like the smell of having it in the bag, but I don't actually smoke it. And um, when she's nervous, she, like, fun. smells I'll the cigarettes, your... right? And, yeah. like, plays with them in yeah, her hand. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 I think you told me the story. Yeah, it's a classic. Like I've seen smoker, it in pre- plenty of uncles and aunts that uh, no longer smoke. And, like, when I uh, – every time I see them, like, after a while, I'm afraid that they're about to light it. So I'm thinking of like slapping it out of their <laughs> face the way Will Smith slapped uh, the shit out of Chris motherfucking rock. Ooh, topical. Like, what the fuck was that? Topical. Uh, I, know, I know it's very cringe to discuss whatever happens at the Oscars, but honestly, I wouldn't even know that the Oscars were happening if this fucking shit uh, yeah, didn't, happen, didn't yeah. actually occur. And I've honestly been Will Smith, been Will Smith in plenty of situations such as this. Uh, and I've hit my plenty share of people, some which I regret, uh, others which were some of the proudest moments of my life. But I've never seen anybody react <laughs> the way that uh, Chris Rock reacted. Like it almost looked like he he liked it, like in a masochistic way, like oh, give me more, daddy. You know, I don't I don't know what you guys' take is, but uh, it was quite weird. Thankfully, thankfully, I haven't had too many altercations in which I felt the need to 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 stop to stop a person. But yeah, it it, it has its moments. Of course, uh, I don't know why. I think in Arab culture, it's much more frequent for you know, like uh, in disrespectful situations, for somebody to slap another person. Um, very much. I I don't know. I, I get the vibe that in the U.S. is much more like you know, like they they start pummeling fists, which I think is fucking stupid because you're yeah. just gonna get arrested for assault. <laughs> uh, but if you smack a person, it doesn't even leave a mark. Like what what is he? And by the way, nobody. I don't think any man will go up to the cops and be like, "Hey, but he slapped me." <laughs> <laughs> like he was like, "Oh yeah, we got in a fight. He punched me." But then you can you know say you know, "Oh, I have a tooth missing, right?" But if some guy smacked you, <laughs> right? I think they they'll have some some sort of toxic masculinity preventing them from, you know, so you can use it to your advantage. Oh, That's yeah. my t- tip of the day for, for you know. <laughs> for Americans, if you want yeah. <laughs> go, go slap that guy. Yeah. Smack them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Anyways, no, I was going to say, uh, bringing it back to the vaping thing, my mom was like a, a white woman at brunch. She was fucking doing the, the, the vape shit, and then she was like, mm, is that pineapple? Mm, it tastes <laughs> like pineapple. <laughs> I was like, 
<laughs> I don't know, it's just a strange image. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we had like a big fucking buffet of we had we had a catering thing come in, uh, and they just made made a fuck ton of food and it was very very good. Mm. We had basically the 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 mood of the day was Lebanese, so um, it was a lot of a lot of Lebanese food. Absolutely great. Is it customary um, there to bring gifts for a housewarming party? Like here, we'll typically bring oh, a, a yeah. bottle of wine or something. Oh, well, the bottle of wine less so, but yeah, yeah. we have, and it, the gifts are stupid. There, there's some people who are like, "Oh, I got you a fucking, you know, right? Uh, I don't know, an air fryer or some shit." Yeah. And there's some people who are like, "Here, did you want two kilos of gold?" <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love exa- that. That's an I exaggeration, that. but I mean, I yeah, fuck yeah. the air fryer, fucking gold. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> that's actually giving a fucking fuck. stable gift, you know, Re- investing yeah. in <laughs> in your guests, if you know what I mean. Do they do like on very old weddings around here? Uh, not housewarmings, but old weddings that like stopped happening a while ago. But in certain rural areas, they still do it. Everybody brings their fucking gifts, and then right before the wedding dancing and everything can begin, the groom goes out uh, on a big stage next to all the gifts, and then on a microphone reads out to. All the guests, <laughs> what every single person bought him. So oh, if you did boy. not spend money, yeah. you are in deep trouble. And if you spent <laughs> a lot of money, like, oh, from Milos, from Croatia, we have three carat gold, 30, sorry, 30 gram gold <laughs> chain. Very nice. Thank you, Milos, from Croatia. And then, oh, Marco <laughs> from Bosnia bought us a toaster. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. And it's just awkward. And everybody stares at that motherfucker. Like, you literally, you really bought them a toaster. And uh, everybody writes down lists of uh, what uh, they got at their wedding next to a price at that time. So that when you go to their wedding later, you buy the same value item so that it's uh, fair. Uh, but at this, but my generation at this point, we just give money. You know, I go, I give somebody, depending on how much I like them, between fifty to five hundred euros. You know, so it's uh, that's that's how we roll. Gifts, gifts are fun though. I like gifts, especially receiving them. I am the opposite of Santa Claus. I'm the Santa Claus that <laughs> takes your cookies and fucks your mom. Jesus. <laughs> I don't like your version of Santa Claus. <laughs> so, so uh, your mom does though. <laughs> All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to the D program. Or welcome for the first time if you're joining us. Today we're going to be talking about jobs and how bullshit they are and bullshit jobs because there's a difference. Um, <laughs> all right, what is a job? The, this is the the very first uh, point that we need to get into. Well, a job is basically means to, to an end for the vast majority of people. You work, you get a wage, and you just kind of live off of that wage. Um, and then you do that until you're 60 and decrepit and you can't work anymore. And then you go into a sad pension that can barely cover your living expenses until you die a, a uh, short and unfulfilled life, um, at least under capitalism. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the okay, so um, generic intro aside, jobs are, across history have had different purposes, of course. Um, I'm not going to go into fucking the hunter gathering bullshit, but yeah, yeah kind of. Um, across most of history, vast majority of people are employed within agriculture, usually local private plot or um, serfdom or fiefdom type uh, agriculture, which they kind of sold produce to a local lord of a land uh, or farmed for their own sustenance basically um and that was you know working was literally the way you lived um then of course in the modern day it's become much more of a uh what is it called head joe we say in arabic oh fuck um it's become more of a uh well like a curse that's a way that's that's not the exact word i'm thinking but it was work more day more or less is a curse because the vast majority of people aren't doing what they want to be doing um they're doing it just to to live like an excuse, it, it, a better translation would be an excuse. And what I'm trying to say is like a, capitalists use it as, you know, like uh, uh, working f- to enrich capitalism. That's the excuse. But the excuse is, oh, American dream. You know, you're going to you're going to get the white picket fence or whatever. The, I, by the way, I don't know what a fucking white picket fence is. <laughs> Why does it have to be white? Is it because it's like white settlers? I don't uh, I don't know. Is, if you look <laughs> is up it a racism speaking thing? of Kentucky, like we were earlier, if you look up a picture of Kentucky, that's the type of fence they have. That's that's the white uh-huh. with the posts and then a couple of the the slats across it. Okay. I'm not surprised that Kentucky is obsessed with white yeah. <laughs> white <Yeah>. things. 
<laughs> but yeah, exactly right. Yeah, so the, 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 that's the, the what I mean. Um, that's more of a excuse, right? They lie to you and they're like, oh, but you're gonna have the American dream. You're gonna have the the trophy wife and the 2.6 kids and the fucking dog uh, and the house and everything's gonna you know and the car and all that. And you're gonna be the only one working and all that bullshit. But now it's you have to be like fucking seven people in order to be a, able to afford mm. uh, an apartment in any decently sized city, uh, unless you move to Chattanooga. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what you you just went to Chattanooga. What what are the property prices like there? I drove you through get Chattanooga. I did not look on Zillow to see what the property prices were like. I did stop at a Mexican restaurant, which was very tasty. Ah, okay, and the prices were <laughs> comparable. So I'm guessing the oh, okay. housing market is similar to Texas, but I don't know. Uh, friends and listeners from the Noog, uh, give us give us your property prices. I'm curious. <laughs> and they're surprisingly exactly right. many, actually, because everybody kept spamming us. Why why the fuck did my favorite podcaster just randomly start talking about my relatively small hometown? They were so weirded out. It's it pretty huh. cool, and now it probably feels even more meta to them. If we ever do a live show, a live deprogram show, we'll do it in Chattanooga. Live in Chattanooga, <laughs> hell yeah. <laughs> live in Chattanooga and Chattanooga. Chatting in the Noog. That still feels like a fucking racial slur. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, fuck. Anyways, um, moving the American dream bullshit aside, we're going to talk about all this more in depth. Of course, the last thing that just to, like, to mention is the, the um, mythology of work, particularly in the United States. Um, or the idea of the Protestant work ethic, uh, which, by the way, they mention about, oh, you know, the United States developed and, and, and reached this high, uh, this this height, this shiny city of a hill status because of the Protestant work ethic, mm. conveniently ignoring the tens of millions of, of uh, black slaves that were brought over <laughs> into, into the, basically, yeah, well, that's where all that wealth came from, okay? There was a work ethic. I'm not so sure about the Protestant part. <laughs> um, <laughs> Slavery does have a, an ethic. Uh, fuck me, Jesus Christ! But yeah, that's so that's that's uh, the the completely scattered fucking that was yeah, that yeah, that yeah. hell of an intro. <laughs> wow, oh I God. can uh, I got comment because I, I do the same. So yeah. Uh, so one disclaimer I want to give before we really kind of get going on this is that in the United States, uh, the word work and the word job essentially mean the same thing. Um, but that's, that is a very narrow definition. So work, in its actual definition, means using your physical or mental effort to achieve something. Work doesn't just have to be like selling TVs at Best Buy or slinging burgers at McDonald's. Um, work can be anything that accomplishes some goal by expending effort. So creating a painting is work. Raising a child is a hell of a lot of work. Climbing a mountain is work. Writing a song is work. So all the things that humans are driven to accomplish is work. And it's important that we separate the notion of, you know, quote, not wanting to work for your boss from not wanting to work at all. I never in my entire life in retail wanted to go to any of my jobs, but there was always something that I wanted to work on. That doesn't make me lazy. That makes me a human being, not a cog in someone else's money machine. And that's something that we really need to start talking about in the United States. You're not lazy for not wanting to go to your job. Your job is most likely garbage, and everybody I know wants to be doing something that is not that job. So I think let's let's move from let's keep that in mind. Work and job are two different things, and let's move into uh, the notion of bullshit jobs. You got Nick? You want to take that? I couldn't agree more with you, JT. And the distinction is uh, extremely important, especially when talking about this sort of a term that sounds relatively edgy and out of left field, but which at this point, uh, because of its absurdity, has become. Uh, kind of a colloquial and even relatively academic term which refers to something which is very specific titled again bullshit jobs and uh, in my opinion there's no one better to ask uh, about what that even is than the very captor or I don't know if not inventor of the term himself uh, rest in peace uh, David Graeber uh, so without I don't know further ado uh, bullshit jobs are exactly a form of paid employment that is so completely pointless unnecessary or pernicious that even the employee cannot justify its existence even though as part of the conditions of employment the employee feels obliged to pretend that this is not the case 
While these jobs can offer good compensation and ample free time, Gra Graeber holds that the pointlessness of the work grates at their humanity and creates a quote-unquote profound psychological violence. The, uh, in my opinion, the value of work does kind of hold like subjective properties. What I mean is, is especially in processes that are like so large and complex that sometimes one, one you know, can't really pinpoint if uh, what their colleague is doing actually has some value or not. You know, everybody thinks they're colleague's job is useless and shit. But what I, what's so good about Graeber's definition is that a job is a bullshit job when the worker himself openly admits to the meaninglessness of their own labor uh, as kind of the core definition. So, uh, you know, man, oh man you, you'd be surprised just how many, including me in certain uh, jobs would admit to this fully, just not obviously in front of uh, an employer, of course. So now when we understand that we have reached a point in which some could even argue over 50% of jobs are understood by the very people doing those jobs as uh useless or uh, a waste of their own time or even a waste as something that exists we can uh, we can properly talk about it without somebody feeling like they their job is being directly attacked or not your job is in this discussion getting directly attacked if you feel and you know deep down inside that it is a bullshit job. Only you can define it as a bullshit job. Uh, and the moment you do, you need to kind of be, uh, accept the, the reality that you're, you're in and get deprogrammed from thinking that this is the only path in life that you might have. But we'll talk about this uh, later, obviously. You know something that, um, like I'm sure most people have had some episode of this, uh, either themselves or with people they know, but... Uh, a lot of jobs, you know, this uh, concept of bullshit jobs, even if you yourself don't have a bullshit job, there's probably some segment of your job that is bullshit. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And what I mean is, I have a friend of mine that uh, works in an engineering firm, and he gets his work done every day in like two to three hours, every day. But he has to stay the full eight hours, of which, by the way, the, the rest of those hours that he's staying there, that he doesn't need to fucking stay there, he's just on his phone doing fuck all, watching YouTube videos and shit. But he just can't leave. He can't go fucking home. Why? Well, this is... Uh, and and the thing is the the stupidity of capitalism is that if you were to actually start complaining about this kind of uh, organization, uh, the of course capitalist firm instead of accommodating to this and being like okay you know uh, then you can finish your work and go home they'll do two things either they're going to give him way more work um, despite mm -hmm. the fact that his job um, what was it called uh, requirements are already being completed they'll give him way more work so they can fill it up to eight hours or they're just going to fucking reduce his working hours and start paying him less so they're just paying for the three hours. Or they're going to basically f see that, oh, there's a redund redundancy in this position. They're going to fire him and then divide those three hours of labor amongst other people, basically. Um, which, again, this is stupidity. So not only can you, not only is there inbuilt inefficiency in many jobs, but if you were to actually bring attention to this inbuilt inefficiency, you would be punished for it. Exactly. So it's in your best interest to maintain this fucking inefficiency. The only one who's allowed to show the inefficiency and actually will get promoted for it is someone at a higher position than the person who is being inefficient. So if you admit to your employer, as you said, that, hey, I like, uh, look at what's happening, uh, let's do something about it, you almost unilaterally get punished. But if your boss notices that and then pitches that to his boss, he gets promoted because they either cut your position and cut your pay or give you more work, as you, as you said. But the market itself, which is supposed to bring efficiency to the forefront is doing the opposite as direct incentive in everyday employees. As I say, you know, you can't have a boss without employees. So we not only have jobs which partially or fully feel like bullshit, but we have jobs that are quite 
by definition, just introduced to a workplace or whole new workplaces are created only so that, uh, you know, the boss can rank up more uh, more numbers as employees in the firm so that it goes higher on the stock exchange or because everybody wants to be a capitalist. So you have 55 restaurants in your cul-de-sac that nobody even goes to and then they're confused on how it's running out of business and nobody wants to work for $7 an hour anymore. It's, it's a self-perpetuating shit that, in my opinion, that's the most important part of, of uh, kind of this criticism that that shows us that the, the even that segment of what the market is promising us, again, the word efficiency, that's the whole fucking spiel, even in this case is, is bullshit. Even in aspects in which it should kind of to a point be brutal and cut off certain jobs from just even existing just for the sake of jobs, it keeps them. Well, at the same time, we talked about this in many previous episodes, it never reaches full employment either because that's going to uh, hurt capitalist interests uh, as well. Uh, and obviously, that's a very expanding conversation on why either of those uh, happen. But at the end of the day, it is noticing the problem. The problem is directly impacting, to an extent, even capitalists themselves, funny enough, but it does not have a modus operandi which can uh, actually solve it. Because in order to solve it, you would actually have to take a human touch to the situation and maybe give your engineer friend that it's okay to work for three hours if you can do the whole fucking project in three hours. Yeah. Well, why not? Yeah. I am getting my shit. You're getting your shit. Shake hands and let's go on. But as you'll learn throughout this episode, that it can't go that way because it leads to some other things which, uh, you know, uh, hurt the system itself. And it's it doesn't want to be eaten by itself ever. You know, another thing that, that ties actually pretty nicely into this is the entire concept of productivity. Um, and of course... Uh, at the end of the day, productivity within an economy is, of course, very important um, because, uh, well, the point of, for example, socialism as a new development past capitalism is, of course, there will be increased efficiency. There will be increased productivity over the capitalist system. Redundancies will be taken uh, away, but in a humane way, of course. And then the point is not to basically you know, patch up the issues of the system. The point is to abolish capitalism and have a completely new setup uh, of society. But this is all a side conversation. My point being is uh, when it comes to productivity within capitalist societies, particularly the United States, we see that not only are workers being directly lied to, Everybody who's probably listening to this, at this point, you are far more productive at your job than somebody in the same position was, if it even existed, 40, 50 years ago. This is a empir this is an empirical wow. fact, yes. right? Productivity across pretty much every single uh, sector of the U.S. economy and many other economies around the world has increased year by year. But wages, particularly in the United States, have remained stagnant since the 70s. So what this means is that you are doing maybe three, four, five, eight, ten times the job somebody that was doing 50 years ago, but you're being paid the same as that guy was. If not even worse, because inflation, of course, affects this entire thing. You have this one side on, on, on one side, and on the other side, despite the fact that productivity has risen so much, of course, you haven't seen your uh, living standards improve, but because product, uh, productivity has, despite productivity having risen so much, you still see, quote unquote, artificial productivity, uh, in which either, for example, somebody, uh, if it's, we're talking about administrators and managers, so those who are on the uh, the, the class cuck side, the capitalist side, would be like cooking books. You know, they they uh, uh, fudge numbers so that either they look better or they make the their the reporting to um, those that they're beholden to uh, basically more favorable. That's on that side. And on the other side, it's the 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 uh, workers themselves. They commit stuff like time theft, which, by the way, I suggest you fucking do. Um, it's your it's your right. You're already having your surplus value um, stolen. Why shouldn't you be uh, do a bit of time theft? Um, clock out 20 minutes earlier. Ooh, the, the, the company's foundations will shake. Clock out five <laughs> hours earlier yeah. and, and don't even fucking blink, my friends. You're getting paid on average for the work you're doing for them. On average, you're getting paid, I think it was 15% uh, if you're doing a office job, for example. So basically, if you're paid for eight hours, you're actually uh, paid for real for one hour. So fucking work those one or two hours. Sorry for interrupting. Please continue. No, but no, but you're completely right. And then on the other side, you have the stupid forced compliance. They aforementioned uh, example was that you have to stay the full eight hours. But there's other shit. Um... And again, this, this is something that I want to actually get into because, Yugopnik, you have a very uh, corporate background at this point. Um, 
some shit that I do not understand at all, and it actually physically makes me sick, is this weird theatrics, like uh, corporate theatrics, devotional theatrics, in which certain companies will have their own... Uh, like office term terminology or words you're supposed mm. to use when you're referring to each other. you have something called like a was oh our company culture mm-hmm. or sh- like things that uh, honestly like as a person who thank god i work in, in the public sector i don't have to deal with this nonsense could you please tell us about that shit i would love to so uh, what we're talking about here uh, has only relatively recently gotten into academia but business owners and uh, ceos have known about this probably since the fucking 30s uh, of the last century, especially in the United States. They understand that a salary alone does not motivate an employee to actually uh, perform to the greatest uh, of their abilities, uh, especially when the salary is not uh, reciprocal to how much work is actually being put into it. So they try to find the different ways in order to push you to do more job, more work than you're basically being paid for. And for a long time, it worked really well, but newer generations, such as uh, ourselves and arguably everybody born since the 80s, I would say even 85, has started to slowly see through this what people like to call internal marketing. So you do not only market a product outwards to, uh, to potential buyers, uh, business owners have realized that you have to market the ideals, perceived ideals, principles, vision, as they love to say it, of the company to their own uh, employees as well. And uh, as I say, a lot of people are absolutely you know, are seeing through this, yeah. But a lot of people, on a lot of people, it genuinely works. They think that what they're being told is the truth. They think that they are going to impact the world to an extent by remaining a part of this company and by working their ass off 10, 12, 14 hours a day in order uh, for the world to become a better place through their employer. It is the ultimate act of of direct anti-class consciousness propaganda, which happens on a daily basis in the workplace. But it's very important, thank you for noting that, uh, because it's showing us one very specific thing, and it's that the capitalist, to an extent, knows more about alienation and admits to alienation more than a lot of workers do themselves. A lot of workers are engaging in this kind of like uh, masochistic, like, like Chris Rock getting slapped in the face, because they, uh, uh, to uh, to to an extent, they're you know eating too much from uh, from their own soup, as we like to say in my part of the world. They're they're believing the bullshit that has been uh, served to them for so long that when they see someone else. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but uh, a non-class conscious person engaging in a conversation about their employer with a class conscious person, which is talking shit about their employer, usually leads to sparks flying. They're like, aren't you thankful for your job? Uh, Yeah, maybe you're getting paid less, but do you know how stressful their position is? You wouldn't ever be able to do it. I know I wouldn't. That's the sparks flying between a guy liking his employer or not, or the other much more, much more sinister one is people that have completely bought into the Protestant work ethic or whatever the fucking hell one wants to call it and genuinely get angry and pissed off at people who chose to take a different path, who don't work bullshit jobs 24-7. They tell them, ah, that's never going to last for that long. Oh, don't uh, don't dream too high shit like this that you listen to on fucking motivational videos or gym music all the fucking time. But it literally comes from, like, class collision of, of like, two... Not materially based classes which have come up of people that, uh, because of material needs, have to do the bullshit jobs, even though they know they're bullshit jobs and I'm not judging them at all, because they have to put food on the table. And then the other category, which is keeps fucking uh, telling you, let's go, man, let's just smoke a blunt, live life, man, travel, experience, feel, which usually, surprise, surprise, that dude's dad pays for his rent. Uh so you have these these two who are both fucking wrong and right to an extent clashing all the time instead of 
you know, understanding the class relations and then getting out of that conversation in general. Uh, and yeah, uh, the long-winded response, but it kind of <laughs> it kind of goes into talking about alienation more about uh, a person's identity with their job or lack thereof, which is uh, very important to note because people just think it's normal, it's natural. They're eating out of the fucking trash can of ideology. They think it's it's to be expected. Actually, it's to be fucking celebrated that you're suffering at work. Mm -hmm. The fuck is up with mm -hmm. that? I remember I used to I used to work at Best Buy, and for those who may not be familiar, it's a like a big box electronic store. Like you walk in, you've got TVs on one wall, you've got appliances, you've got like I sold cameras, for example. I was the Sony guy, um, so I sold specifically Sony cameras, and I hated it. Like I mean, I went to I like cameras a lot. I love cameras. I've always been you know I'll research them in my free time and stuff just because I think they're interesting. But I hated that job because I was you know made to stand on my feet eight or nine hours a day, like walking a circle around the Sony display and just trying to sell specifically Sony cameras when clearly, you know, a guy walks in and he wants the can and you got to try to sell him the Sony, whatever. Um, but we had this this employee that, that came from another store. She was transferred and she was the exact opposite. She loved trying to, you know, climb the ladder and stuff. And she would like follow the managers around like a lost puppy and she would come and talk to us mm. about how we're not doing the best we can do and stuff and we should we can we should cheer up and we should uh smile and, and be friendly to the customers and stuff mm. and i'm like look i'm doing i'm doing my the, job the, here the, <laughs> the boot tastes good i promise <laughs> exactly. the boot is delicious drinking yeah, her own kool-aid that's what i fucking wanted to say and i said soup motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> i was wondering when you'd get it um <laughs> but yeah that's that's the two that's the two types of of people and like the thing is she was the only one that didn't realize that everybody else hated her. Like even the managers, like okay, cool your jets, kid. The only one that liked her was the <laughs> was the general manager who would come in like you know once a week or something like that. And he was like, oh yeah, that's a go getter right there. She's gonna have my job one day. It's like you're not even here. Uh, your job is not to be here. And so, yeah. just keep that stuff in mind. It's like it, there's nothing wrong with with showing up, doing the bare minimum to collect your paycheck, and going home. That's it's your job. It's not your life. It's not your family. Don't don't buy into their propaganda. Yeah, exactly right. I don't, sorry to just derail for a moment, but at the stupid home uh, housewarming thing that I went to, um, there was a, a guy there, and we were just talking, and the politics comes up. I wonder you uh, who, <laughs> guess who brought the topic up? <laughs> yeah, actually, it wasn't me for once. But um, so yeah, uh, the 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 guy starts talking, and he gets hints that I'm a bit lefty. Uh, and I love that question. I love it. It's like, oh, like, oh, like you know, they, they asked me. He's like, are you a communist? He's like, oh, I'm, I'm a bit lifty. <laughs> yeah, classic, classic. I love it. A little do they know. Same with lefty. my girlfriend's family <laughs> all weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. Us lefties, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, anyways, but the guy, we were talking, and uh, he was like, oh, but you know, the the, the, the billionaires and the fucking uh, the capitalists, they provide jobs. How can you dislike them when they provide jobs? I'm like, oh, Fuck it. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you know the meme. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so, uh, yeah, anyways, no, but uh, that's a very, very good point. There, you will meet these people who are have exactly as as you have me beautifully said drank the soup, <laughs> and as a result, um, completely uh, like yeah, and he lost the plot. I think is another American mm -hmm. idiom that I don't understand. Um, but uh, <laughs> there are so many. Every episode, you have like two or three. I'm like, yeah, that one doesn't make sense either. <laughs> <laughs> I remember somebody at the drinking game that you got me sent. Yeah. Somebody on the on the subreddit made a fucking uh, bingo card with the drinking game thing. Oh, fuck, I don't know. You guys know what I'm trying to say. But anyways, uh, my point being is that, yeah, these people who, who have uh, completely bought into this stuff, um, and as a result, I don't know, either they become completely disillusioned with it eventually, or they keep uh, basically being this... this um, uh, class cuck, <laughs> if you allow me, um, and uh, until uh, they they realize that uh, there is no future in this way of thinking. Sometimes some people can't be saved. But my point being, and that's what JT said very beautifully, is that take your life is your own. You should never make your job your life, um, because even if you're even if you're doing something you love, as something you absolutely adore, in a capitalist system. It's set up so that even if you absolutely loved something, they'll make you hate it mm. because of how hard they'll work you and how little they'll expect to pay you because, oh, you love doing this, right? So it should be a reward in and of itself that you're working within this shit. But what I, what I was going to say also is um, the very... Uh, <laughs> Not to not to quote Bordiga, but uh, the tyranny of the of the of capitalism is the enterprise, not the fact that the enterprise has a boss. Um, the very structure 
of the uh, capitalist enterprise or any office, everything that, that under capitalism is inherently autocratic. It is a a uh, completely top-down uh, structure uh, with absolutely no democratic say of participation. You come, you do what you're supposed to, like a military barrack, and then you fuck off. If you don't like it, then you can leave. And very few instances, from like for example the United States, and a few co countries where workers' rights are a bit better, you can have a union that can kind of improve your rights. But at the end of the day, most of the power, vast majority of it, lays with the, the uh, employer. With the with the capitalists, uh, but that's something that makes it interesting as well because one of the f uh, like funny and completely incorrect criticisms we get of socialism is like oh you know they're all fucking dictatorships you have some like one guy that decides everything or a small clique of people that decide everything and what's funny is that the reason people say this shit and then they understand it immediately is because this is their daily experience with the capitalist enterprise they go to a job the w where they work and they have no absolutely no democratic say and they must follow orders from either one guy or a small clique of fucking people unaccountable at the very top it, in a funny roundabout way what people expect Stalin to have been like he was nothing like that at all but the that expectation is found in every single branch of every single capitalist enterprise that dots our beautiful fucking blue earth in that basically every department has its own several little Stalins that basically uh, dominate every aspect of your life which you spend the vast majority of your waking day in um I find that funny as well. Even down to the fucking, what's it called? The the, the uh, cult of personality shit. Uh, you, you have a, an absolutely uh, unaccountable manager that you're not allowed to criticize, by the way, because if you make him look bad, he's going to make your life a living fucking hell, right? So you can just kind of either stay quiet or try to do the best job despite their uh, inefficiency or incompetence uh, because usually there was some nepotism involved in their fucking employment. Or what's um, the easiest so that you can sleep at night is, uh, sorry for repeating myself, but drinking the Kool-Aid. Actually say to yourself, okay, actually, yes, my boss is a genius. I uh, thank you to him for everything that is happening in my life. I will listen to absolutely everything he says and actually believe it. A lot of people find that as a solution to uh, the scary complexities of life, I guess. And more importantly, of the fact that they might actually have more choice than they actually think they do. And it works. It works for plenty of people. That's why class consciousness is so difficult to instill in some. And yet others have, quote unquote, a rebellious spirit. And it's much easier to instill in them. No, everybody has the rebellious spirit. Just some have had more of it punched the fuck out of them and are now uh, corporate <laughs> drones. But the, every corporate drone, remember, was once a, a beautiful human being which had to explain to itself why it's wasting every day fucking typing in this Excel sheet. Y you can either quit, but that's scary. Oh, wait, that's actually impossible because you have a mortgage, because you have student loan, because you have fucking, you have two kids, or if, even if you don't have kids, you got to pay rent, you got to do this, you got to do that. Uh, and, and your only other option is to, is to, com to completely uh, fall in line and, and follow. Or exist in this limbo where I probably majority of our uh, older listeners, oh my god, now a lot of them are going to cringe by older, I mean those who are not still in uh, high school or college. <laughs> uh, so, so yes, if you're 23, you are old. Uh, but no, the, all the listeners that are working <laughs> are probably there. Like they have class consciousness. Hopefully they're members of organizations. Hopefully they're agitating on a daily basis or weekly or whatever. But uh, they also have to eat bread. And it's okay if you want to wear the fucking nice Nikes for three ninety nine or the fucking fucking whatever. It's, it's, that's not the goddamn point. The point is... Uh, Making sure that you know the the spirit doesn't fade. Don't uh, selling out isn't about making a buck. Selling out is no longer thinking alternatives are possible. That's a very beautiful way of saying it, actually, and that ties into the revolutionary optimism mm. uh, perspective as well. Um, like you know, uh, I remember uh, I was reading this conversation, um, and it's people basically discussing investment. Um, but they're Marxists, like, is there a, is it even morally appropriate for me to invest? And I'm thinking that the general idea, at least that I have, is you should make investments because you need to secure your financial future no matter what, right? Uh, it's Sadly, this is the way the capitalist system works. Vast majority of countries don't have enough social nets for people. Um, so if you need to make investments, then make investments. The best case scenario 
is that socialism happens, and then in the end it doesn't fucking matter, that if, because afterwards everything will be guaranteed. A job and your employment and healthcare and education, everything that is important to you in life will already have been guaranteed if we achieve socialism. And if at the very ver oh, at the very worst, you're going to have a, uh, a somewhat of a cushion that you can rely on if shit hits the fan. Right. Mm. Of course, base case, uh, best uh, I said, based case scenario. <laughs> yeah, best case scenario is that socialism, uh, capitalism completely crumbles and socialism arises, and then fuck the investments. Right. Mm. Please, yeah, uh, uh, <laughs> expropriate. Yeah, you've seen the video of what's his name of uh, of uh, Chavez, and he's like, "What is that? It's a private business, sir. Expropriate it." <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a, a completely taken out of context fucking video, yeah. but yeah, it's hilarious. Um, well, yeah, God, what an absolute that. fucking Chad! You always like dig out like the jewels of, from the bottom of the ocean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> be, I don't know, JT, if you agree, but shit that I've forgotten from like oh yeah eons past. <laughs> and this fucking boomer in the body of I'm not gonna say his name age <laughs> is just like fucking just throwing yeah. them at me. It's I, I explain it. I don't know, JT. I explain it to my like I, uh, I explain your boomerism to the fact that mm -hmm. you actually have a life, unlike me. <laughs> but I explain uh, his boomerism <laughs> that he's oh i'm doctor i am very busy all the time you know look at phone at work so he doesn't check out the new memes you know and then like two weeks later he like shares something uh, to the listeners we have our own discord yeah where we chat just the three of us we also have one with patrons but the one where the three of us chat he sends us like a meme and me and jt are writing like ha 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 even though like between each other through like telepathy we're like dude you're like three weeks old like three weeks old like <laughs> like are you going to tell me now that Kim Kardashian said that, uh, you know, you should get a job? Oh, so original. It's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> I'm a boomer. I'm a bo emotional damage. There you go. That's a boomer me too. <laughs> that was a compliment, my friend. Everybody who knows about the uh, newest no, memes no, sure. uh, has yeah. mental illness, respectfully. <laughs> two people with, oh, sorry to people with mental true. illness for comparing you to memesters. <laughs> oh, fuck. But yeah, um, with all that beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, information, thank you, I was going to mention something that I, I wondered if we can all kind of give you examples from our lives about, which was uh, bullshit jobs, not that we've worked, but, uh, you know, every instance, wherever you've worked, there's somebody that you know in some position that was a bullshit job. Mm. Uh, I'm wondering what ex examples you had. I can, I can start with my example, which is fucking administrative bloat in medicine in medical systems and if anybody if you're a nurse or even a, like a technician or whatever and especially in, in in the in the united states you know what i mean by fucking by administrative bloat for some reason at this point we've reached even though healthcare has become even more advanced we have all these people who are like desk job office stuff basically right who sit and god knows what they do like schedule um scheduling shit and uh uh, making spreadsheets of like income uh, or, or not income what's it called uh, like the, the local economy of particular clinics but the thing that make, does make sense is for a vast majority of particularly uh, national healthcare systems it doesn't matter how much something costs they're, they're just going to pay for it and they think about it afterwards right they'll get it from the state on credit if they need to um, so it makes absolutely no sense and then you talk to them you're like what, what do you do and then yeah like of course no there's um, administrators are necessary to an ex extent but when your administrative when uh, per per uh, in, uh, amount of people employed 60% are administrators and 40% are actual medical personnel then you know you have you've done something mm -hmm. really fucking wrong but sorry that was my just my example that I've noted I would say for me when I worked at Best Buy that job that I mentioned earlier selling Sony cameras I would say that itself was a bullshit job and it's interesting because like Sony makes good cameras and if I were working at like some Sony store which I don't know if that's a thing just selling those cameras, then I would say, yeah, that's a fine, reasonable job. It makes sense for someone to go there, shop for a Sony camera. I know a lot about them. I sell them to the person. There you go. It's easy. But the specific context in which I was selling those cameras was a little pointless, I would say, because they Sony made an agreement, as did Canon, as did Nikon, uh, Nikon, as did Samsung, to have... Uh, like stall, not stalls, but uh, displays in particular Best Buy stores um, to have their products and have a product expert for each of those brands in the store. And the, the whole job description of each of those experts was to sell specifically that one thing. And the thing about that is 
someone comes to Best Buy and they go back to the, the camera section and they see Canon and Sony and Nikon and Pentax and Olympus and all these other camera brands all put together. And yet here are these three competing uh, camera experts yeah. like me, the, the Sony guy, the Canon guy is right there too, the Nikon guy is right there too. And our job is to convince the uh, the dude who walked in that they actually want my camera. They want this brand of it's camera because this brand of camera is the best. Exactly, yeah. And it's that was what we did day in and day out. And we were all friends. And we're like, yeah, I don't care what they buy. Like I want to tell them, that, yeah, that Nikon's right for their job. They're shooting sports. They need the faster frame rate. Sony doesn't have that, whatever. Um, this is all, you know, several years ago now don't get mad at me sony fanboys i know the new cameras are good um mm. <laughs> but it was just so pointless because when some when the manager would come by and ask me is like hey we need coverage in uh printers I'm like i don't know printers that's not my job description and the sony guy is going to get pissed at me if i go over to printers because they'll come in and do checks to make sure you're not going anywhere else and so the whole time i was basically a captive in this you know 20 by 10 strip of best buy walking a circle around the cameras and polishing the the lens case that's been polished three times that day already for eight or nine hours a day and that was the entirety of my existence there and that to me that's a that's a bullshit job if i've ever seen one hell to the yeah Maybe i would rather work a thousand night shifts and fondle a thousand old man nut sacks <laughs> to have done what you did you are, i salute you for your service <laughs> thank you for your sacrifice oh god you deserve a pension after this shit <laughs> i, I was it. so happy the day i worked it walked out of there it was awful as you oh, should man. as you I should can imagine. i mean Jesus it's Christ. even i mean it's goes back to what we were talking about before. The, the, the insane inefficiency there is uh, self-evident. I mean, the need for a camera expert is there, but uh, separating them based on uh, different brands just ends up confusing uh, the customer when they're bombarded by three different perspectives, which uh, are in a way directly lying to them because they want more uh, more attention on uh, on the brand that they're representing. It's, uh, it's just, they already had people that know a lot about cameras and somehow they screwed up how to even properly expropriate their labor. And that happens all absolutely all the time. In my, in my case of, of bullshit jobs or uh, sections of jobs that uh, were bullshit are pretty much too too many to count. But one that uh, two come to mind as kind of uh, peak examples that might surprise people. And that's when you're working with massive budgets and when you're m working with uh, very specific targets that you need to hit. Uh, reporting becomes a very big uh, section of your job. So yes, actually executing a, uh, a plan is important, but then showing what happened, analyzing and explaining why it happened the way it did to your superiors uh, is important so that they can decide what next steps uh, need to be made. So reporting at one point at the beginning, I don't know, it was 20% of my job, and then at one point it became 60 at this particular uh, company that I worked at. Uh, and a few, I don't know, six to seven months pass by and the guys from, uh, you know, the central office come by to visit and we need to show them our six, like we need to take all six monthly reports that we've made and turn it into a big, um, it's not quarterly, but for big report for two quarters, everything that's happened in the six months. So we can brag about the good shit, say, oh, this was bad, et cetera, et cetera. But I thought that that presentation is going to last for five minutes because they've already been receiving the reports, 60% of my work on a monthly basis. I go up there without even a presentation, start explaining to them uh, from the perspective, oh, as you've seen this, as you've seen that, we need to do this. And they're like, seen what? And I'm like, I, you guys, uh, I mean, you're Mike, right? I CC you every month. I send you the reports. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, no, we have those reports sent from, from everywhere, uh, but uh, they're so that we can have a backlog and check if something needs to be check, checked later on when we see very, very bad results or very positive shit. So basically, I realized that 60% of what I was doing was just in case they themselves need 
to pin things on me when their superior comes and tells them, yo, why is this quarter like results down by five to six percent? They never looked at them, took the information, then told me, yo, do this better or do that better because I have more experience. They just wanted to have them there as security against me for when somebody's telling them that their job is not being done well. And that, like, that right there just fucking, like, my eyes went back to the back of my head. I, I wanted to turn <laughs> into one of those, like, fucking dudes on those old videos that destroys a, a printer, like, in the middle of the office and throws one of those big <laughs> block screens. Like, you know how much, how many hours of my life were spent in, in those, like, fucking BI and those, that software that does that shit and gathers that, it, it's fucking nightmare. Uh, that's number one. And now Number two, much quicker one, uh, uh, our boss, we actually had a pretty decent manager for one of the places I worked at, uh, as decent as a manager can be, because, you know, she protected our, um, not our rights, but uh, our interests more than that of the employer. Yes, some managers exist like that are like that, and hopefully those listening to the podcast, which happen to me, managers are the same. But don't do it too much because what happened to the lady? She got fired, <laughs> like obviously. <laughs> I'm not and, surprised. Uh, but I'm that's completely. inefficiency. That's not bullshit jobs. Bullshit jobs was that. Uh, she, because she was fired, an EU regulation does not allow uh, anyone to be put in that specific spot if she was uh, fired in the way that she was fired, which basically says this position is no longer necessary. So they had to wait six months before getting a new manager. Obviously, after six months, they got a very shitty corporate piece of shit. But uh, the six-month performance was excellent the second that guy walked in down by 20 percent down by 25 <laughs> down by 30 because he was very mm -hmm. controlling there was no freedom of expression no creativity etc cetera, etc cetera. so everything went into the sinker and his job was the definition of a bullshit job just somebody there a boss so that there can be a boss because i don't know that's how we do it that's how our parents did it that's why we'll do it the way Americans circumcise their boys. It's not religion, but <laughs> my dick looks like this, so my son's dick's going to look like this. That was, uh, uh, yeah, great. Uh, oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. My brain just does that sometimes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I was going to say, that's a very, very good point, uh, Ego Pnek. I was going to uh add about the you know the the manager getting fired thing. Isn't that so lovely? Isn't that like when... when so much research has been done on... Uh, worker efficiency and productivity being directly tied to their happiness, um, mm -hmm. both subjectively and objectively measured in a workplace. And a good manager is the key to this shit. But they see something that they don't like and they want to control more than they want their efficiency and profit even sometimes, which is incredibly stupid. But yeah, again, the market finds a, ooh, you know, ooh, the fucking market always solves every issue, right? Um, and in this case, having a nice manager means yeah, she gets fired and instead you get some dipshit um, that doesn't know his head from his ass, but is controlling enough. He's Mr. Fucking, uh, he's his little Napoleon in the, in the, um, <laughs> Office space by the water cooler. <laughs> oh, yeah, classic, classic. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, did you guys have water coolers, by the way? Is that a real thing, offices? Yeah, oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. What else, how else are you going to spend your time? Like, if you're, you're not doing work, you're going to, like, every once in a while, every hour or so, you get up to walk to the water fountain, you nod at three people, mm -hmm. you fill up your water bottle, you walk <laughs> back to your desk, you log back in, and it's then exactly you pretend to work for another hour. Right, exactly, make some coffee God, that I takes a bit longer, but, ah, Vulcan people are ahead of the curve as always. <laughs> yeah. Chain smoke, nobody by law can tell you mm. you cannot have a smoke break. So you just chain smoke, <laughs> and you smoke for four hours out on the balcony, and the group, and there's always the group of the smokers, which are all obviously the cool kids that, like, gather, and then they're against like the the, the kids that uh, the don't smoke and depending on if the boss is a smoker or non-smoker you will notice in every team there's more smokers or less smokers because a lot of them are social smokers and want to suck the bosses for jj or penis and therefore uh, smoke so they can spend more time with them or um smoke less so they can spend more time with them with that said, I was I had a, another interesting topic. God, we can launch into this for like an hour, but we can I, I guess limit ourselves a bit. Something I hate, and this is kind of like in the past what ten years maybe it's kind of uh, popped off, as the kids say, mm. uh, which is side hustle bullshit. Oh god. This, mm -hmm. For those who are unaware, um, and they, not Americans, they probably know, but people who aren't uh, <laughs> in the know about <laughs> American <laughs> slang. Um, no, that was that was such a like a. 
Such a polite burn. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't send it to be that way, oh, but sure, oh, why not? It was. Oh my god. Oh yeah, please continue. It was, it was so organic. <laughs> like it came out of your from your heart. You know, it was. <laughs> oh, the anti-American really Americanism came from my heart. Uh, I wonder yeah, yeah, why. That was really funny. So <laughs> yeah, I, I couldn't help myself. I just think I spilled out like. It's cow, fine. Like, it's fine. I had it. But yeah. Anyways, what I'm trying to say is, uh, for those who don't know what what a side hustle is in 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 English, what it means is you have a second job or a secondary job, basically, on top of your actual regular employment. Uh, that's supposed to be you know a passion driven job that you work really hard on to kind of get it off the ground to make secondary income. That would suddenly, if you know, you work hard enough and you fucking suck the mythology cock uh the the <laughs> the dragon the little behind the guitar mm-hmm. enough then you're gonna get to a, a point in which you can make the secondary income your primary income and that's just kind of how, how you live then you're gonna be your own boss who can just decide whatever they want to do and you're gonna drive the lamborghini and have the fucking all that bullshit that's the that's the general like uh, image of it the popular image of it um and what i find hilarious about this is no, at first, it started as a sort of like pseudo entrepreneurial thing. By the way, I fucking hate that word, both ah, to spell it and also entrepreneur shit. Entrepreneurs. Call entrepreneurs, <laughs> yeah, entrepreneur exactly, shit. Yeah. Uh, that, that is my pitch <laughs> to the world. I will fucking patent that fucking <laughs> term. Yes, please continue. Yeah, uh, uh, we 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 made the jo- we made the joke earlier, but uh, whenever somebody tells you that they're entrepreneur, they're just telling you they're unemployed. That's what, that's what that <laughs> means. But anyways, um, there's nothing wrong with being unemployed unless you're an entrepreneur. Then you. <laughs> That person needs then to be smacked. An um, but anyways, it first started some pseudo entrepreneurial nonsense that oh you know you can get secondary income and you can kind of improve your link standard that way. Um, but slowly it started to morph into this kind of you know like oh you want to have the absolute basic like you know living conditions you want to just to make barely scrape by then you should work a full time like forty hour a week job plus you should do fucking Ubering on the side or I don't know uh, work on Fiverr or <laughs> start up a, an MLM not the good MLM, uh, I mean the <laughs> multi-level uh, marketing bullshit. Um, Herbalife, is that the American one? Oh, yeah, one? that's, that's one of them. Yep. That's the one I've heard of. It's supplements or something. I don't know what's with you fucking Americans. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of supplements here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. But, yeah, um, uh, the, the, the general... I'm tr- what I'm trying to get at is I, f- I hate the concept. I just say, why can't people just l- enjoy life? Why can't somebody, like, decide, you know what? I just want to take a nap for fucking for for an hour why does everything have to be work 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 why well i think it's just it's it's become so ingrained in our consciousness that it's just that's the way things are like how many times have you been asked my american comrades what do you do like if you're at a party what's the first question oh what do you do we we live in a society well uh, we live in a society that is obsessed <laughs> with <laughs> labor being the sole determinant of a person's value right your your job is your personality <laughs> You got a kick out of that, didn't you? <laughs> okay, <Sorry>. Joker. <laughs> Sorry. Your job is your personality. Like the, the f- your job's the most interesting or important thing about you. And th- the way we conceptualize labor is a byproduct of, of capitalist modes of thought. It's like they're, they're, but, uh, if yeah. you don't work, what are you doing? Like, well, you're not you know not driven you you're not uh, a hard worker you don't have a good work ethic what what are you are you morally decayed <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's it's very disappointing and 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 disheartening to see that people who hate their jobs st- even they buy into mm. it it's like yeah uh, oh i'm a mm. i'm a cvs pharmacist that's that's my personality now it's eh. The, uh, what makes it even more disappointing is you see these people who are so sold on this shit where they see somebody and they're working, not even a minimum wage job, by the way, as if there's anything wrong with being a minimum wage employee. The fuck, everybody's life runs on minimum wage work. All right, Jesus Christ. Um, but even if something, let's say a level above that, let's say you make fucking $13 an hour or something uh, in the US, which is still not a good salary, but it's better than minimum wage, um, and federal, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, these people... Uh, they still will be like, oh, but I still can't afford an apartment, uh, like, you know, a basic fucking apartment, or even my, my uh, insurance bills on top of rent and everything. I can't afford this stuff. And you'll get these idiots who are like, oh, yeah, but you're not on your grind. You're not on the Sigma <laughs> grind set. You're not, you're not on your grind. You should be you should be hustling there f- f- fucking six hours. You, you work an eight-hour day, you get off, and you work six more hours doing God knows fucking what, mm. right? Uh, working on your SoundCloud fucking rap album. <laughs> I don't know what you're working on, right? For six hours a day, okay, Okay, so you're telling me you're you're gonna do 14 hour workdays, dude? I have uh, I have 
quite frequently quite frequently 14 hour work days all right it's not fun it's incredibly tiring it's soul crushing it's draining it prematurely ages you it slowly decays every facet of your being both physical and mental for what all right for me at least like medicine is a, is a very long um, education even after you graduate right so if you want if you want to get into specialization and then you want to be a consultant and all that kind of bullshit you have to put in these hours because you're going to get something out of them back in experience of course but when you compare this to for example putting all this work and, and time and effort into something that most likely won't give that same return on investment as, for example, being a, a doctor or an engineer or an architect that can you know put in all that effort uh, and actually see something come from it, then what's the fucking point? What's the fucking point? Mm -hmm. And b by the way, this is also completely omitting the fact that you might have kids, you might have um, uh, a spouse, you might have uh, other social responsibilities, Right. Let alone your own like mental health and 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 uh, enjoyment and hobbies and that. no 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 fuck that shit. If you have a hobby, it has to become a side hustle. If your uh, hobby can't be a side hustle, then you should get other hobbies. Mm -hmm. What the fuck is this? This isn't life. Yeah, it's it's interesting that I think there's been a bit of a shift from uh, how side hustles were originally conceived of. It was like uh, it used to be you know babysitting, dog walking, tutoring, something like that. Yeah. Now a side gig is you you join the gig economy. You work for Uber or Lyft or Deliveroo or whatever the rest of them are. There's so many now. Um, but it's also spawned this hustle culture. And that, I think, is the much mm. more toxic part. Like those other people, they're just trying to, to get by. Like you drive for Uber because you have to. You need to make extra money to make ends meet. And that sucks. But then you've got these freaks who will they'll start their side hustle and their side hustle is you know buying uh, cheese graters on AliExpress and flipping them on Amazon oh and stuff God. like that and they're they're trying Stupid to find man. these get rich quick schemes and crypto. The, yeah crypto, <laughs> crypto. the the t-shirt <laughs> businesses where you buy, you buy sweatshop labor t-shirts and you get you know you screen print on them some stupid saying or something uh, it's the whole thing is like even those people they recognize that work is bullshit here and that it sucks and their only way to figure to 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 free themselves from that and to understand it is to take that notion of work and just make it into something else it's still an incredible amount of work that they're doing but they're just offloading the exploitation from themselves to someone in the developing world or and they they still don't quite grasp the fact that the problem is uh, how we conceive of labor here in the United States or in other hyper-capitalist economies. It's its very strange. It's very dystopian to see. And I, I really hope that trend kind of dies uh, with Gen Z. I hope they're able to kill it for good. I mean, I doubt it. The, the, the more... The more the tendency is less money contained in uh, more hands and more money contained in less hands. Uh, which leads to people trying to find an alternative way of uh, making the money that they necessarily need or don't need. People have done this throughout capitalism and will always do it through capitalism. Hustling has been yeah. a thing since I don't fucking know when. But the, as you guys have said, as you guys said, the problem here is that now hustling has become um, something that if you don't do, you are lazy. Something yeah. that uh, people can point at you and tell you we've come to that sort of level where if you do not work for 12 to 14 hours and you dare say that the economy is shit, that the system is shit, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you're just offloading your problems in someone else. You are just finding excuses for why you're not doing this, mate. I don't know why I'm British now, but it's <laughs> uh, uh, it, we, we, you know, went left level by level. First, we were like, okay, they're fucking me at work, but I'll be able to buy a house. Then, uh, no longer a house, they're fucking me at work, I can buy a car. And now, uh, they're fucking me at work, everything is on fucking credit. I need to pay off all those credits, mm. so I need to work for 11, 12 hours. As I've talked about previously, the new two, like, subclasses, and you see someone else who refuses to do that, and objectively is pointing out the systemic issues which are forcing people into doing that and that's why he doesn't want to buy into that shit and actually do it and there's they they call them out as lazy basically trying to hustle other than uh, in your main job has 
for the majority of people, in my opinion, become the new standard. And just as up until 30, 40 years ago, it was uh, considered disgusting for you not to have a job because you're a parasite, we will see soon, uh, that's my prediction, that you will be considered a lazy parasite if you don't have two jobs, at least a job and a half, a job and, and a thing where you work, for example, three to two to five hours uh, a day uh, at the very least. And I just, for I, me personally, I have absolutely nothing against, as long as it does not in involve the expropriation, exploitation of other people's labor, you making some extra fucking dengue dengue some money on the motherfucking side and you could get to work less for your employer fucking do it my man everybody's fucking trying to try to ma- trying to make a living but don't uh, tell the other person which is obviously on like one HP at this point that they're dumb for not mm-hmm, doing it yeah. or that they're lazy for not doing it but just on the hoping that the new that the gen gen Z is not going to do this etc et I really also do hope they don't but people who will be having less and less money and when people have less and less money that means they need to work more and more uh, to pay off all the more and more debts which are getting accumulated so the working day is just going to be expanding and the more jobs get taken away by capitalist automation not socialist automation the more they will have to do bullshit jobs which will still have to exist because they need to have money to buy the products created by said automation unless they do fucking ubi and shit but that that's a topic that would take two hours to discuss exactly right and i think something that uh, a good point to to, to kind of tie all this together of course is uh, like exactly like um, you opening said it's not the perception like oh everybody will expect you to be lazy if you don't work those two jobs or whatever but it'll be the necessity out of out of basic well, economic necessity you won't be able to afford a decent living standard if you don't do this uh, and i've seen this uh, in my daily life also, by the way, uh, if, amongst physicians, amongst my, my fucking self, man, Jesus Christ, if I didn't have any sort of side income, I would, be, the, the, my quality of life would be drastically reduced, yeah. as if it's any decent anymore, I work fucking 15 <laughs> hours a fucking day sometimes, but I mean, like, it would be even worse than, uh, than you know, alhamdulillah for, for everything, but I'm just saying, and this goes for across uh, yeah, just wanna, uh, like, the professions. Three, and, three dudes that, like, arguably have three jobs at the same time, are telling you that the hustle shit is a ripoff <laughs> unless you're making some good money. So it's not the, the three random pot smoking fucking commies uh, s- that smell like piss. I don't smoke uh, yeah, pot, are, aren't telling yeah, you. Yeah, it makes me scared. Yeah. yeah. What? 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 Because <laughs> you smell like piss. We were both just saying we don't. We don't. We don't smoke weed. Uh, weed makes me scared. Yeah, weed makes me fucking <laughs> terrified as well. <laughs> Seriously, all three of us don't smoke weed. Hakim probably smokes weed. No, ah, Hakim smokes weed. I don't smoke. Yeah, nah, you smoke. Well, lucky I don't smoke. Nah, you smoke weed. <laughs> oh my god, I got derailed again. Weed. Finish your thought. <laughs> No, I just wanted to tell people yes, that we are, we are criticizing hustle culture as hustlers. You know, we we, mm. we uh, to an extent. You know, it's uh, we're not te- we're not dudes that work two hours a day and are telling you, yo, don't do this. Just so yeah, that right. you know, it's not mm. it's not uh, you know a divorced guy giving you yeah. tips on how not to lose your wife. You know. <laughs> it's like you gotta dominate her. <laughs> Fucking, Jesus, it's always a guy with a receding hairline. Why the fuck? So Chad dominated her. Now <laughs> I am Christ. sad, dude. But Chad just gave her God attention. Save no you. man, he dominated her. Man, God save he, anybody. He, him, she, she, her, or they, them. <laughs> from these type of people <laughs> okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> across the spectrum. <laughs> God save you from a middle-aged, slightly chubby, receding hairline man who tries to cover up his baldness by trying to grow a, a beard ineptly as he sits there all <laughs> fucking sweaty and red with oversized fucking headphones telling you about how, you know, <laughs> about him going to Thailand oh, for God. fucking prostitution <laughs> counts as, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was a bit dark, I'm sorry. But anyways, um, my point being, this is not a controversial statement, but to capitalists it is. If you work a job, you're fulfilling a need within an economy, particularly within capitalism, right? If you're fulfilling a need within an economy, then you deserve a decent living standard. Mm. 
this is not this should not be controversial although it is especially so in the united states um i still remember the fox news thing where it's like oh are poor poor people really poor 40 oh, percent of them have microwaves <laughs> <laughs> i still remember that shit uh, i'm like what the, oh my oh fuck but anyways yeah and i think we can transition to a, a, a nice thing so to be on a bit of a more positive note which is what is the socialist attitude toward towards work uh, and if you guys will allow me the general maxim that we as socialists or a socialist society would embody is from each according to their ability to each according to their work, meaning that whatever you can actually contribute, you will contribute, and as a result, you'll get remuneration in uh, proportion to that amount of work that you put in, right? Uh, that means also, by the way, all those previous uh, guarantees exist. Your uh, education is guaranteed, healthcare is guaranteed, housing is guaranteed, uh, employment is guaranteed, social and cultural enrichment of all forms is guaranteed. Everything in life that makes you feel precarious under capitalism is already guaranteed to you. So what you have, aside from all the stressors of life, Soviet citizens did not need to worry about their fucking mortgage payments or, oh no, I have a, a student loan payment and I every day I pay, uh, every month I pay off the, the interest and I can't even touch the loan. So after 20 years of paying it off, the amount is even bigger than when it fucking started. Soviet citizens or Cubans or people in Vietnam do not have these worries, right? Um, and this is the point of socialism, to make a human main system that will allow you to, at the very basic level, exist on some humane, uh, you know, presence on this fucking earth. And then afterwards, in, in, in such a existence, you can actually contribute to work more. And of course, this contribution takes a different form, unlike with the capitalist enterprise, where you kind of work to just make the basic wage that will maintain you, the absolute basic amount, and then everything above that is just profit that goes to a capitalist for infinite growth for infinite growth mm -hmm. sake in this absolutely nonsensical system under socialism you have two things work for oneself and work for society work for oneself is that which guarantees you of course your actual wage even keeping in mind that everything else is guaranteed your uh, if you even have rent which most people owned their uh housing in, in, in uh, socialist countries, but even if you had rent, it would be pegged to like 3% of your uh, monthly wage. All food prices are pegged. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, the of word course. pegged has been a, a, a forever fucking ruined for me. <laughs> All food prices are fixed. That's the yeah. appropriate term, right? Um, so you can not you can get fucking 50 eggs for uh, basically nothing, right? Um, Luna Oi has an excellent video on, on like market prices uh, or fixed prices in, in, in Vietnam, for example, with rice and other uh, basic staples um, so uh, my point being is that uh, at the end of the day you have this work for oneself in which you can basically use for your daily uh, living expenses of which there aren't very many and then you have work for society and work for society means that after you make the wage that goes into maintaining you and your family the rest of the work that you do in accordance to your ability is direct directly goes into a social fund that maintains everything from the roads they use to hospitals and education to those people who can't work the elderly the infirm those who have other sorts of uh, disabilities or limitations, etc., etc. So rather than working for a capitalist and just sending this money into the fucking ether so Jeff Bezos can shoot his penis rockets into the fucking sky, you actually send it into a social fund that can, you know, help single mothers or maintain the fucking roads that you drive on every day or make sure that you and your kids get education and maintain and improve living standards as time passes by. Uh, this, of course, is completely a uh, completely. Um, in contrast to capitalist attitudes towards work, which are built on, like men, as I mentioned, infinite growth for infinite growth's sake, unaccountable, unaccountable wealth hoarding to the tunes of fucking, you know, again, the, the, to use the Wolf's, Richard Wolf's uh, saying, uh, wealth that would make even the pharaohs blush, right? Inequality forcibly built into the system so that as time progresses, not only do you see your living standards get worse, but you see physically the amount of wealth is concentrated in smaller and smaller hands, uh, ruling classes, of course, being uh, forced on occasion by working class movements to uh, some concession, you know, concessionary improvement. Uh, but that, of course, always is, is, is precarious and can be taken away, etc., etc. Socialism is a humane system. Capitalism is a fucking bullshit system. Mm. That's what we're trying to get at. Yeah, and in <laughs> good the, TLDR. <laughs> and in the context, and in the co but it, but in the context of bullshit jobs uh, that we discussed uh, previously, they will inadvertently no longer exist because they are spawned by the necessity of the market to keep itself alive. Therefore, the jobs which will take their place 
for those which will be employed will be jobs more in line with the actual needs of both workers in their what I like to call labor expression, meaning in what they're actually good at and what they actually want to do with their life and where they actually find their passions instead of in positions of infinite pen pushers for the sake of just keeping the ball rolling for no particular reason. And yes, one can criticize, and it would be good criticism of, for example, the Soviet Union very often in engaging in a similar policy of coming up with jobs just so that we can on paper say that we are 100% employed, etc., etc. But we need to remember this was in direct competition with capital estates, which were also trying to sell you the idea that they are bigger worker paradises than uh, the Soviet Union, which defined itself as a worker paradise. So in a in a true socialist system, the work that exists and the work which is fulfilled is cleared from a bullshit job because a socialist system itself, ironically as compared to a capitalist one, will not tolerate the inefficiency of said bullshit job even existing there in the first place. And I think one thing that we should really keep in mind is that you know it's all well and good to talk about once we achieve socialism but even now like today in the united states or other you know very capitalist societies we've already seen experiments with shorter work weeks around the world like new zealand mm -hmm. spain yeah. and iceland are, are three big examples on where the work week was reduced to four days and and 35 hours instead of uh five days and, and 40 hours or whatever they have without a reduction in pay, which is critical. And can you guess what happened in those experiments? The Quality world died. Life, collapse. They all died. Societal yeah. collapse. Civil war, right? The, the Jews. Yes, something about the Jews. Debunked. Right, the Jews something. They, the <laughs> Jews did it. And then the blacks joined the Jews. And this is why I Jews. never ask you people to guess things. And then, uh, and then, Look, and then the erectile Muslims. Erectile dysfunction And then the worst, was the, 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 the Slavs. They, erectile dysfunction. They had sex with their wives, right? <laughs> sex with their wives. Jesus I Christ. Yes, exactly. sex with their wives. It's always the sex with the wives thing. Uh, wow, you guys, you did it. You guessed all, all the things. That was every single thing that happened uh, in, those, in those scientific studies. Those all happened, yes. No. <laughs> Quality of life went Sorry, way up. Quality of life went way up. Burnout vanished, and productivity wasn't really affected. Why? Because people just aren't productive fact, for eight hours a day. Uh, it, it, exactly. productivity, yeah, well, productivity increased in several of the studies. Actually, exactly, exactly. Enough. It's where it's a waste of time just you know locking people in a cubicle. Most jobs really only require a few hours of work, and the rest of our time is spent like pretending that we're working because we aren't allowed to leave. And to put that in fairly scientific terms, uh, productivity has a diminishing returns curve. That means each oh. hour you spend at work is less productive. Once you've sent your five emails for the day and filed that report, what is the point of sticking around? Everything after that point is wasted time. It's useless. It's not making the business any money. Mm -hmm. It's not improving the worker's life. So what is the point of holding people captive? It controls. Yeah, uh, that's, it controls. That, yeah, it keeps people as you know, willing little cogs or unwilling little cogs in the machine, and they're exhausted, and then they have to get up and do it again because they have no alternative. And A worker who works a shorter work week will get ideas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. Well, exactly, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. Much bigger ones, and, and and even even if you're sitting here listening and saying to yourself, no, actually eight hours is more than enough for me. I actually enjoy eight hours. I finish my stuff maybe a bit uh, earlier, but then I get to be extra productive for my employer or something. Well, my friend, a five or a four hour work day, even even in that case, you, you would be able to be a class cock, which you seem to be enjoying for four hours for your employer. But then the other four hours. No, I'm not about to pitch you hustling after I've criticized hustling, <laughs> but you might actually be able to invest it in things that you're passionate about that uh, don't necessarily exist as quote unquote uh, jobs uh, or experiences in capitalism. Do your music, do your art, do your sports, do your. Go press olives. What, whatever. Yeah, press <laughs> olives. Uh, have sex with Jim. He's looking at you from the yeah. other cubicle all the goddamn time. <laughs> okay, you have a wife and yeah. he has a wife, but it's okay. <laughs> Include the wives. I love the it, wives yeah. also look at each other all the time. It's perfect. <laughs> so it, it's just I love that you went there. <laughs>
but but no, nah, it, exactly. It's it's uh, it's a no lose situation. I can't agree with mm-hmm. JT uh, more with this proposition, even inside of the the capitalist <clears throat> structure, because it doesn't even hurt the people who enjoy. Which I don't believe there's many of them, but who enjoy being overworked. You'll just be able to do mm-hmm. more work with Jim. You know. You can go to the gym with Jim, and then afterwards you can have him give you a gym job. <laughs> a gym job sounds like okay. I'm not even gonna. The, yeah. the image that it gives me is very. Unfair. It's like it's like he he uses his scrotum as as goggles on top of your face. That's what it, what a gym job sounds like to me. I don't know why. Ah. That's the image I get. Jim seems like that kind that, of guy. Isn't that just getting teabagged? Is it? I don't know what. Yeah, you're putting I, I don't on your know what being, being on a guy's teabagged. face all the time, or a girl, or anybody. Uh, this is going to NBA. spawn fan art. Yeah, that's that's. Oh, I, I please, yes. Oh God, no. <laughs> There's there are there aren't enough lewds of Lenin. Okay, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. Oh God, I'm sorry. One disclaimer that I think is worth mentioning here at the end is that when we talk about working less, a lot of Americans will kind of have a knee jerk response to that. It's like, whoa, that's that's lazy. That's uh, what are you what are you talking about? You want to destroy? Do you six- work fourteen hours in the mine? Yeah. Do you, do, you, <laughs> do, you, uh, do you send your kids to get <laughs> fucking pneumoconiosis to get black lung and then fucking die at the tender age of twenty two? My favorite. You seem favorite. pretty lazy sh- 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 to me. Sh- sh- my favorite. <laughs> What do you mean I will have to work for less than eight hours a day? That means I will have to see my wife more. <laughs> yeah. Boomer, I hate my classic life. dude. Millennial, I hate my life. Yeah, but anyway, we're we're not we're not saying you know we should all be lazy or anything like that. This isn't about getting back to some primitive way of life without the technological and social advancements we have Return today. Return to monkey. Yeah, we're not returning to monkey. <laughs> it's about. <laughs> it's about taking stock of all the time that we're wasting. Just the taking stock of all the time going straight down the drain for no yeah. good reason other than stopping the current unjust system from falling apart. It's about enjoying a life like we have now with more time to actually enjoy it, which we don't currently have. If you spent a couple less hours at Best Buy, would we be okay? Yes. Or AutoZone. Yes. Or making coffee or on the clock in your cubicle. Like, sure, GDP could go down a bit. We're not, we wouldn't be maximizing profits and exhausting all the human labor power at our disposal. But who cares? That's not the point of being a human being in the first place. The point of being human is to experience life. And you can't do that if you're considered nothing more than a tool by your employer. Exactly right. But I'll. The only people that want that are those that have a direct interest in the system. Mm-hmm. Aha, uh-huh, now we've come full circle. You, as a worker, do not have an interest in the system. Capitalism is not a system built for you. It's a system built to exploit you. You and your your interests are diametrically opposed to the interests of capitalists, and as a result, you must develop class consciousness, you must educate yourself, then agitate, organize, and then overthrow the system and institute a system that is in your interest, which is socialism. In Minecraft. And of course, to tie it. <laughs> yeah. of course. No, not in Minecraft, in real life. Yes, go, guillotine. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Don't fucking, Spotify, don't remove us or whatever the fuck you people do, okay? Yeah, of course, the guy who's talking about the prostitution in Thailand, the fucking fat, chubby red guy, uh, <laughs> who's divorced because, I don't know, right? He he was <laughs> he would slow down too much near the fucking school zones, right? That oh, guy. Oh, God. Okay, that guy, can keep his he can keep his, his his fucking podcast up on Spotify. But God forbid I say you guilt in your boss. God forbid. <laughs> <laughs> These are all jokes. Yeah. I mean kind of but not really. Yeah. Um, socialism is when the government does stuff. The more stuff it does, the more socialism it is. And if it does a real a lot of stuff, come on, what, what is it guys? It's, it's communism. Communism. There we go. Alhamdulillah. So that was a <laughs> I'm sorry. The true enemies of a socialist revolution. <laughs> Are socialist podcasters because if socialism was to exist we would be out of a job <laughs> oh, alhamdulillah this is my fucking hope yeah. jeez please 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 have you guys seen the, the, that image where it's like oh uh, there must have been some sort of mistake i, I was gonna make like i don't know like uh, poetry or whatever and then it's just a guy <laughs> yeah. in a military force like dig the fucking hole <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, there's yeah. some kind of mistake us here are like there's some kind of mistake i want to work in the coal mines and like speak into the fucking mic <laughs> 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 record the podcast oh jesus christ my audio waves look insane i'm so sorry uh jt that little last period i was ye- that was all yelling oh god <laughs> all right well you'll you'll manage yeah, i'll be fine the end goal be all of uh, when uh, the state owns everything and it becomes communism 
is to eventually, through the advancement of technology and the destruction of hierarchy, create a world in what in which what kids jobs are an option. I just like because for people that's very important to understand that it will take a lot of labor and work and the jibs uh, to uh, establish that sort of world. Never lie to yourself that that is not the case or criticize certain experiments because, oh, they didn't immediately jump into like a fucking flat society where everything was unique and perfect and everybody could just uh, hunt butterflies all day like SpongeBob uh, from today to tomorrow in like a spam of three months. Uh, but still, that does not mean that the, the end goal, at least in my envisioning of uh, how it would function, would create a society in which you could, as Mars himself said, fish in the morning, hunt uh, in the afternoon, and read a uh, fan fiction of uh, Batman <laughs> fucking Robin in the evening. Just as Marx exactly. intended. Yeah. Well, there you have it, my little piggies. That's today's episode. <laughs> we, we, we had a, we, that was unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> did you just call our viewers little piggies? Well, I sure did. Because they're um, little piggies. Hmm. Little piggies. <laughs> we had so much more. Animal Farm oh, confirmed. <laughs> Debunked. Literally 1967. Okay, um, <laughs> we had a, a lot more that we could have talked about here. This is a really big and really interesting topic. I think we got some good stuff out there for you um you got to hear a little bit about our uh the bullshit jobs we've worked or experienced piggy piggy uh, <laughs> so we hope this was interesting to you guys oink, uh, oink. certainly was a lot of fun for oh god all right i'm, gonna, I'm wrapping this up <laughs> this has been the program i'm jt i'm akim and i am you piggy piggy <laughs> good luck oh, bye